All right, everybody, so welcome back. Last session, you all had just made good on your escape from the House of Lament, the Hall of Rest's old manor, and you found yourselves, after traveling through the mists for some time, before a set of massive gates. After checking out these gates for a while, you approached the entrance swinging open as you approached, creaking from years, maybe even decades of disuse, before you crossed into a strange new land. Dark forests, an atmosphere of death and despair just clinging to everything around. As you made your way into this domain, after climbing up to the top of the walls that surround it and getting a good look at the environment, you all began to make your way towards a village, a settlement that you had seen from your perch high up on the, high up on the walls. You made your way to this village and found that they were quite suspicious of outsiders. The people of Kresk turned you all away until you could prove your value to the village, to the settlement. They asked that you travel further along the road, due south, to a nearby winery, to see if you could figure out what was going on with a late shipment of wine that they were expecting. So. You traveled further into the, sh into the fog of this place, different from the mist that had encompassed the outlying area. This new place you found yourselves in had a low-hanging fog that just seemed to cling around just about everywhere. But you made your way towards the winery. As it was coming into view, you were accosted by a swarm of blighted plant creatures, seeming to be the surrounding forest come to life lurching towards the winery. With all of you in the way, you defeated all of these creatures. And as you did, a cloaked figure stepped out from the nearby woodlands and bid you all approach. You did so hesitantly, and it was then that this individual introduced himself as Davian Mardikov, he, one of the proprietors of this winery. And had a bit of a troubling insight for you all that the being that you had seen fleetingly and presumably has brought you here is he said he is the land so it is with these strange individuals that we will go ahead and get back All right, everyone. So, these cloaked individuals approaching you all, they put their hoods back, and the first thing, the man in the front who initially greeted you all would gesture, and several others, about a half dozen more, would approach from the woodland. And the initial man that had first approached you all, he would first greet you all and say, I'm very sorry if we alarmed you. We were unsure if you all could be trusted. But after this display, well, you wouldn't have put those creatures down if you weren't here to help. Is that why you've come? I mean, it is not, not really. why... It is definitely not why we've come. But... That is not to say we are not here to help. Yeah, honestly, we're here about the shipment of wine for a, a nearby town. Yes, yes, of course. Kresk, they're expecting their delivery. It's it's several days late. We've, we've been driven. Driven out of the winery. We've been hiding here in the woods for over a day now, trying to see if they would just leave, but... But they don't show any sign of leaving. In fact, more of them continue to show up. Why didn't they try to attack you? Oh, they did. They most certainly did, but they seemed to be intent on going for the winery. As soon as we left and abandoned the building, they cared very little for us unless we got in their way. Well, that's, uh, very odd. 
Say, it is, it is quite odd. We've been, that we haven't seen any attacks like this before. Not, not, except for in, in the stories that I heard when I was a small boy. And at this point, an old man standing near the back. He's like, I've seen it. I've seen this before. I've told you all one day, one day he would return. It was too good, too good for too long. I told you all. What are you talking about? The devil returns to these lands. You see a couple of the younger people kind of rolling their eyes. And you're like, don't, don't, don't bother him. He's from a different time. Apparently there used to be savage animal attacks and terrible monsters roaming all over this place. But it's been 20 years since anyone's officially claimed to see this devil and then the old man will be like, 21! 21 years! And I mean, I'm, I'm awfully curious. Who is this, uh, devil you speak of? The old man, the devil Strahd, of course! The vampire in the castle! Again, the younger people are kind of just... Vampire. Yes, this place is his. We are his subjects. He looks around towards the younger people here. Just because you all haven't seen him, just because he's been quiet, locked away in his tower for so long, I knew, I knew, couldn't last. At this point, the young man, the one who introduced himself as Davian, he would say, Dag, Dag, you need to calm down. I'm sure it's not all as bad as you've said, just these strange people have brought these lights in these twig things whatever they may be just to cause some trouble i'm sure it's not as not as dark and bleak as you're saying it is the old man kind of I you never know we can help with the blights but we need a safe place to rest we are a bit beaten up of course of course whatever they're up to they're still well underway there's three or four people not these strange vine and twig creations, but the people that seem to be commanding them, they wear strange animal skins. And I think one of them actually had a whole deer's head on his own head, like a mask. But they're inside and they're up to something, but I don't think they're very close to finishing whatever job they've started in there. They seem to be moving things in from the outs from the outlying woodlands. Sam, any rituals you're familiar with? <clears throat> um, judging by the description, what they recognize, what kind of, what people were dealing with? So he would describe that they were bringing in bushels of strange plants that the people aren't very familiar with. Go ahead and make a survival or nature, whichever you'd prefer. So, with a 13, that was survival. Okay. So, with a 13, I think that you would be able to pick up on the fact that they may be trying to create some sort of a poison. Plants that he's oh. describing are... The plants that he's describing would lead you to that conclusion. The things that they're taking into the winery. I guess, judging by the things they're talking about, uh, something toxic, perhaps? Poison? A poison? You think they You're mean to what? poison oh. the wine? But why? You're telling me. That I mean, do you have any competitors? Your... I got nothing better, but, so, like, you're telling me there's the possibility of a man with a deer head making a poison. We should definitely get some sleep before we encounter this individual. Yeah, I'm more than willing to sleep. Right, so y'all want to take a long rest here? Yeah. If we're able to, yeah. Are we in the open or are we at like some camp? You are in the woods. 
the Mardikovs, there are seven of them. Um, they would be able to keep an eye on things and let you know if anything requires your immediate attention while you rest. So why don't we go ahead and roll a d20. And we'll see how this goes. Um, I think I'll roll Aurelia. this one. Or you. I, I mean, I can do it, but... Yeah, go ahead. I can oh, no. Your long rest does go by uninterrupted. I said 17 or higher, we get something happening. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you wake up. We start the campaign. <laughs> That's it, guys. That's the campaign. Rod. Uh, oh, no. Okay, so yeah, all, you can all go ahead and take your long rest. Um... Using the various implements in my bag, uh, maybe some scraps picked up here and there from the woods, can I recreate my steel defender? Yeah, yeah, definitely. During your long rest, you can definitely pull together enough parts. Maybe the Mardikovs have a scrap heap nearby. It's more of an oak defender, but it'll do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We'll see Veronis over the course of the rest carving series of runes into various components and fitting them together. Nice, nice. Okay. So as you all wake, kind of come to begin to regather after your rest. You hear Davian and Dag speaking to one another, and Davian seems to be concerned as he's talking to the older man. And says, Dag, Dag, I understand that you've seen some things in your time, but why why would he want to poison the wine? You think if he's if this devil Straj you speak of is behind this, why would he why would he do it? Why would, I don't understand the motives. And Dag would... To spread suffering, son. Of course. He cares for naught except for the suffering and the pain of others. Kresk was very intent on getting their hands on it. They both look over towards you. Davian, oh, but... don't, don't, don't worry about, about, about him. I'm sure, I'm sure it's all just folklore and fairy tale. I mean, the thing is, some folklore and uh, fairy tales are real, though, so you never know. Vampires are real. Of course, of course they're real, but the fact, the idea that there's been one here this whole time, in, in 20 years, 21! In 21 years. Where has he been? Why hasn't he emerged? Why hasn't he come down to feed? This Strahd may or may not be involved with the winery here, but could it be possible that these, I'm going to assume are druids, have some kind of grudge against the city or a nearby town? Not that I'm, not that I know of. I mean, there's been the, the wood people wandering around out there in the deep woods for as long as I can remember, but they've never actively sought to do violence or do harm to anyone before. I mean, sure, wander into one of their rituals, and that's not a very good time, but them actually seeking out a place like ours and attempting to destroy or despoil it? I mean, we could be influenced by something. I don't know if it's necessarily a uh, vampire, but still... Whatever their motives, they are certainly up to no good in there. It's only a matter of time before they complete whatever it is that they've come here to do. Are you all are you all prepared? Yeah. It's okay. So if one of us does a little bit of staking out, can we see like these people still going in and out of the estate? Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so you took your long rest, and we'll say that either before or after you got a chance to maybe stake it out for, what, like an hour, you thinking? You want to be watching it? However long. I just wanted to know if there were people, still people milling about that we can see. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check. Guidance. Guidance. Perfect. Yeah, uh, you, there, you definitely see movement without even, you don't even have to really be trying to see movement, but what's going on in there is a complete mystery. There's at least a hundred of them. <laughs> Wait, what? A hundred? Excuse me? Uh, but I can't really tell. It's too hard to see. Do you want me to, you know, go in there with a, like a, like a spider or a cat? I mean... Not a bad if idea. They are familiar with nature magic. It could be risky. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Um, could we try dressing like them? Well, I can't really see them, so probably. Sam, do you have a disguise kit that you can oh. use for Brianus? Uh, I have a disguise kit, so... Okay, and a disguise kit allows you to disguise one person, correct? Yes. I mean, I mean, technically I do have a disguise kit, yeah. I can technically create a disguise kit with an hour of work. I mean... I can use it, it's up to you, but, like... The Bardakovs would be able to give you a basic rundown on what these people look like. They got good looks at them. Um... Does Sam know this guy's self, or Aurelian? I don't. <clears throat> I do not know. Yeah, I don't think druids get this guy's self, too. I have passed without a trace, though. Hmm. I'm not bad with stealth. We could try sneaking. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty good, too. I think I have, like, a plus three or something. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, we can try and stealth. Okay. So you'll want to sneak up to the winery, then? Yeah. Okay. Pass without a trace! Online! All right, let's go ahead and get some stealth checks for everyone. Better than my perception check. Plus 10, man, plus yeah. 10, best 32, run 28. Ridiculous. <laughs> 16. 16. Silent. So you all are certainly able to approach undetected. And as you all begin to approach the winery, you see that the place is pretty well kept. There's some places where it looks like a window might have been broken out, broken from the inside out. You can see some things have been tossed out through the windows and things like that as you approach. Um, nobody tries to hassle you as you approach, and it does appear that you manage to get all the way up towards the front area undetected. And so... You could try one of the windows. Oh, we have a map. <laughs> you map fuckers! Petra. They're dying. Wait, did Ez and Petra come with us? I can't remember now. Yeah, they're with you. Sure. Oh, they took a long rest, I presume, too. Yes. That is accurate. Uh, my macros are not working. Let me reset. Okay, I was, I was going to do it manually. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just so that I can... Uh, okay, it looks like spell slots are available. There we go. Okay. All right, everyone. So, as you approach, there is a loading dock front of you. 
um, the Mardikovs informed you that, as far as they know, their doors in this area should be unlocked. But parked in the loading dock is a wagon with three barrels set in braces on the bed. A raised wooden walkway runs along the west, south, and east walls. Through a hole in the ceiling, you all can see a wooden arm of a loading crane with ropes and hooks dangling from it. Going to venture a guess and say that this is the wine. The Mordekovs would have told you of several vats of wine inside as well. Likely, if they are trying to poison anything, it will be that. Well, uh, my point is, we could just take this and leave. Just putting it out there. Uh, one last thing. I did forget before you all parted ways from the Mardikovs. Um, they would have given you the general layout of this place. They would have told you that the office quarters and living quarters are upstairs, that there are four massive vats that constitute essentially what's left of the wine that they're able to produce from this harvest um, in four large vats in the main area. And then down below is where they keep their rare vintage. There are several barrels as well as hundreds of bottles of wine in the basement area. Hmm. So yeah, you have the loading dock in front of you all. Varanus has suggested simply taking it. What would you all like to do? I mean, I, I, I'll agree with that. Sorry, DM. No, <laughs> by all means, what would you all like to do? <clears throat> well, first of all, can I approach the barrels and kind of get a good whiff if I get any poison? Absolutely. All right, let me draw this. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. 22. Sam, the barrels here that you're sniffing at do not appear to be poison. <clears throat> okay, I'll mention that they're clean. Boulevard, you would hear neighing and the sound of horses in the stable right here. Being so close to them. Look, I'm I'm all for seeking out the darkness and striking it away where we can, but we don't have a good bearing on our situation, on where we are, on what this place is. Oh, it yeah. might be wiser to not venture into the darkness unnecessarily. Agreed. Yeah, I think we gotta take this uh, relatively slow, so... Seems rather innocent, horses, that's what I hear. All right, so what would y'all like to do? Um, are we going to take it? How are you going to go about doing that? I mean, none of us are particularly strong, which is the big issue, but... We have horses that no, we I just need to get. I, get. I guess, yeah, we can uh, untie the horses potentially and then maybe see if we can... Uh... Sam, you tried to speak with my familiar before. Perhaps you have ways to speaking with these beasts. <clears throat> sure, I'll, I'll approach the horse. It's just... just can we tell there? where they're coming from? Uh, yeah, there's a stable door here, and you can hear the horses coming from within. Um, okay. Perhaps. Uh, oh, that's a big. We fella. can. Oh dear. The horse tokens always get me. Horses. Down. Yeah, horses are just large. What? They just look so big relatively in yeah, this map. It's Honestly. hilarious. <laughs> a big really like comes across here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sam, if you I'm can just... ask them oh. to pull this for us. 
we would be most grateful. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, do, we, do we do we do we have anything to you know you know bargain with? They kinda, you know animals don't gotta do things for free. Indeed. Um, as did you lose your leg at the uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the castle? She looks towards you like my leg. She rolls up. I'm just she rolls up her her uh, rolls up her pant leg a bit, and it looks like a leg. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure it's still there. No, it seems he did not. I just ask. have a twisted sense of humor. Uh, rations? Do, would they like rations? Well, rations are too... saltier. Maybe they like the saltiness of them. Uh, Stunning again, though. Don't get too far from me, because passage. Pass without a trace is kind of like an aura thing for me. Oh, that is or, true. Or, or, just... or, is it, or is it at the start of. I didn't want to go too far. I just wanted to creep up and try to like listen or keep a lookout or whatever. I, it looks like there's a door here. There is, in fact, a door there. It was like, you know, like a 10 foot, you know, automatically, you know, um, activate pass without a trace and then you got it. But okay, okay. Just there is, in fact, a door there. right there, Veronis. Yeah, just kind of taking up a SWAT position, listening for any commotion. Make a perception check. Remember. Guidance. Yeah, I can do it from 60 feet because I have subclass ability. Didn't we meet someone who was part of this winery? You mean aside from the Martikovs that you were speaking to a minute ago? Yeah. Beforehand, like when we were at the wall, or am I wrong on that? No, the first people that you came into contact with were at Kresk. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, so Sam, as you're trying to coax the horses out, you can get the sense that they are pretty scared of something. There's foul sense on the wind. They don't really want to come out of their stables. I'll just go, all right, but what'll it take for you to, you know, actually help us? I know you're a little bit scared, but what'll motivate you guys to get to working? You can make an animal handling check if you'd like. Um... Uh, sure. You know, as far as, okay. So... <laughs> I was going to say give him a Slim Jim, but that works too. Uh, so, they take your reassuring tone and they begin to start creeping out. They're obviously skittish, a little scared of what's happening. I'm going to I'm gonna stop them, like, just... Wait, 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 wait. We'll get to working when I say we get to working, all right? We don't need you making any crazy sounds from adding something in that might spook you might spook whatever's inside. One of them does like the little snort and nod. Alright, I'll come in, I'll come back and get you when uh, we're all ready to go. I just close the door. <laughs> yep, uh, just point of order, my steel defender was here. Um, I don't know if you want me to make a stealth check for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It'll also have the class without trace bonus on it. It doesn't have proficiency. Okay, so 21. Just kind of standing there, that's all. Okay. So, Veronis, what was your perception check earlier? 13? Okay. Yeah. Sam will be right back. Veronis, you can hear after a while of being there with a 13, you can hear what sounds like creaking, like floorboards creaking somewhere nearby, but that's about it. Cool. 
I'll just keep listening for anything that sounds like it's approaching the door. Okay. What's that? So the door is to the south of me. What's this here? That is another door. Oh, two doors. Okay. Petra and Ez are kind of just keeping an eye on the woodland, on the tree line to the north of you all, making sure nothing's trying to sneak up on you. Did we see any more blights on our way here? Uh, no, we did not. Not since the first swarm that you all encountered. Did the blights have a unique uh, smell, or no? The blights? Uh, they smell like rotted vegetation. Oh, so that's... Yeah, that can get lost within everything here, so... What does Barovia smell like? Rotting vegetation. <laughs> Pretty much. Just rotting things in general. Uh, so wait, I mean, are, are we getting the horses, or what happened? Oh, uh, <clears throat> basically just have them on standby for whenever we're ready. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm ready, so... Yeah. You might as well hook them up, at least. Okay. I'll start kind of, like, limb them out. And urging them to do this quietly. Is this a two-horse wagon or a one-horse wagon? It's a one-horse wagon. Starts following you, Sam. Okay. Alright, time to put some of that muscle to action. Who here is proficient in land vehicles? Oh, shit. Uh, not me. <laughs> Thus, knowing how to properly tack and harness a horse to a cart. Can I ask is, the horse? It's proficient in land vehicles, right? What's up? Yeah. Land vehicles is what we are looking for. Neither Ez nor Petra is proficient in land vehicles. Damn. And unfortunately, Sam, the horse with its intelligence of two will not be any help in, in teaching you all how to tack it properly. Damn it. <laughs> uh, can I mean, I, I've seen wagons before, yeah. but can I, I mean, I can probably try? Sure. So, Aurelia, um, I will need you to make, I'm going to do, I want to say just a general dexterity check. You could also do intelligence if you'd like. Um, whichever skill from that you'd like to choose, or you can just do a straight roll from one of them, it will be a disadvantage. Guidance. Yep, I'll do dexterity with guidance. And do, 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 do. Uh, so 12 plus guidance. Alright, 15. 15, that's not terrible. Okay. Aurelia, as you are beginning to tack up the horse, beginning to beginning to get it attached to the cart, there's all the all the all the tools, everything that you need is here. Everything looks familiar. You're able to get the horse harnessed up, making a bit of jingling, but when it comes to attaching the horse to the carriage, it's a little clumsy. And Veronis, you're still actively listening for approaching, right? Yes. Make a perception check. I will give you guidance. Uh, 15. Give me guidance? Yep. Isn't that a touch range? No, with my subclass, it's 60 feet. Uh -huh. Okay. Veronis, you hear footsteps 
approaching rather quickly. They are not approaching from the door you're listening from. They are approaching from the landing above you. And you hear footsteps on the walkway above you, approaching quickly. They look over, and you hear what sounds like a hiss, like an animalistic hiss, like... <sighs> you actually cannot see what is directly above you, Veronis, as it is on the landing above you, but Sam, you see what looks like an antler-headed man on the landing above this, and he sees you all. Look, He looks right down at all of you and sees all of this. He raises a hand and chants a couple of words, and you all see this individual. Oh, he looks nice. Okay. Cast Produce Flame on the cart. Oh, no! Produce Flame? Uh... That's bad, right? Fire is bad. Fire is very bad. It's wine. Oh my god, where's my paladin tiefling that I played? Lo 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 lo. Veronis, you hear shouting back into the winery. In what language would he be shouting in? I believe it's Sylvan he's shouting in. I know Sylvan. All druids know Sylvan. Yeah. So he's shouting in Sylvan. He shouts inside. He says, do it! Do it! Do it now! They're doing something in us now! <laughs> do the thing! Do the thing! <laughs> okay. Can I take the crowbar out of my bag and jam it into the door jam to the south of me? Uh, you certainly can. <laughs> Is it in any door or an outie door? Which door? There's two doors. One here and one here. S south door. Okay. So you're trying to jam it shut? Yeah. Oh, what the time for create water to be useful here. Okay. All right. Um, I just want to make sure that you all understand fully what's going on here. The winery, these three barrels of wine, there's three barrels of wine on this cart. Inside of this structure, there are four giant vats of wine that constitute the rest of this season's harvest. This is on the druid. He's the one who started throwing fire. I mean, that's also true. Okay. You also figured out that these barrels are not poisoned, yet the druids are trying to poison something. So... The situation you all have in front of you now is that these cart, the cart and these barrels are now on fire. You know that there are at least two druids inside because you have the one that just showed up and another that he was shouting towards. So yeah, that's everything. You all can do whatever you'd like to do. I just want to make sure that you all fully understand what's going on here. Uh, should we be an initiative or are we just reacting right now? You can just react right now. Uh... So... Uh, the, did I successfully jam the door? Does it open outwards or inwards? It opens inwards. Um, go ahead and oh, okay. make a strength check. Good. Can I jam an inwards door? Oh, I'm no. not strong. <laughs> okay. um, you jam the crowbar into the door, and it doesn't seem like much has happened, but... After a moment of waiting, Veronis, it doesn't sound like anyone's approaching. Okay, I'll, I'll collect my crowbar. Okay. Uh, the horse is visibly spooked by the flame. Sam, if you'd like to keep it under control, we'll need another animal handling check at disadvantage because of the fire. Sure. Okay. Horse calms for now. I'm gonna try and finish um, attaching the tack to the horse, just so that yeah, why not? I okay. think that's what she would do, cause her intel. Well, yeah, her wisdom is low. I'll just do this accessional inspiration for. Uh, no need. Uh, well, you can if you'd like oh, no, to, I but you've already you've already drawn yeah. the attention of the person that was upstairs, and it would just the all the only check the check was just to see how. Oh, that's fair. Efficiently, yeah. you could do it. 
how quietly you could do it. And I couldn't. I, I rolled the natural one on that anyway, so... I'm probably just not... Yeah, I'm not gonna waste it. I'm just gonna be like, yeah, I'm still gonna do it, guys! I don't care about a fire! Get water! Is there water anywhere? Uh, you haven't seen any sources of water. Um, when you were approaching, you would have seen a well around the um, western side of the building. I'm gonna, well, okay, while well, that's happening, I'm gonna just start grabbing pieces of, like, the ground and the, and the dirt and just kind of just kind of trying to, you know, scuff it out. Okay. All right, Sam, go ahead and roll a d20, because I do not know what check would be appropriate for putting out a fire. Sam, you grab a... We'll say like a blanket or a bucket or something, fill it up with dirt, and you take it over, and you are able to put out the five-foot space of fire that is growing on the cart. So the fire is out. The horse is calm. If we're going to do something, we got to do it now. I'd like to try to jump into the driver's seat. Go. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, tr I tried to put it on quietly. Apparently, I didn't put it on quietly enough. Just go. Okay. What about the rest of the line? Uh, I mean, are we going to have to, like, kill people to get the wine, or...? That's what we came for. Let's go. We must control it somehow from spreading. Oh, uh, the fire is out. Oh. oh. Yeah, Sam was able to put the fire out. Perfect. I ordered my steel defender to claim around to the back. Should be able to reach. I, I, yeah, I'm going to ride the horse. I'm going to see what happens. I mean... My animal handling check is bad, but that, that's the only thing I can think that Aurelia would do, is get on the back of the horse and try to ride it. Okay. Yeah, it's a fully tacked horse attached to a cart. Sam's already calmed it. It's not going to be very difficult to ride at all. Right. So, you all gather up onto the wine wagon with the three barrels in it, one of them slightly scorched but otherwise intact, and take off. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The carriage goes rolling out. The carriage goes rolling out of the winery area. And as you look behind you, you can see some movement in the windows of the winery. There's definitely still some things in there. And so, yeah, as you all make your way away from the winery and rolling down the uh, down the path, Davy and Mardukov would run out and he'd be waving his arms at you, yelling, stop. Around him. Friend, what is it? it? Says you've already done it. They're, they're, they're gone? Oh, no, we uh, we just got well, the wine, and then we're going to go back to town. But... Uh, you, I, I don't understand. I thought you were going... I thought you were going to, to help us. We did. We got you some wine back. You'll, you'll be taking it to Chris. They'll go through it. They'll go through it in less than... A, the, he looks in the back. They'll go through that in less than three weeks. What about the rest we of Barovia? All of the uh, wine we, is produced here. We you said they were going to poison it. Did calm we, down, calm down, friend. Did we say we would kill them? I mean, not really, but you know. But also, we never said we were done. Yeah, so I, th I think we need to go back. You don't understand how people are without alcohol. They can go crazy. Um, right. What? <laughs> my friend Sam is saying is we intended to go back after we got you some wine. 
this was an immediate uh, retrieval. This was the first yes. batch that was. And we're on our way right back. What? I mean, we didn't yeah. promise them wine in perpetuity. I mean, yeah, we didn't really do that. We kind of said, you know, um. Yeah, I think we go with the Kresk, honestly, only because. The- <laughs> <laughs> we well, mine, but, you know. To be fair, I don't know that Kresk will allow us in. They did ask us a specific task. Yes, they asked us for a delivery of wine. That's what we have. Yeah, I mean, that's what I feel like we need to do anyway, is just give them the wine that maybe come back, you know? Hmm. It seems to me that it won't be enough. I mean, he said that it's gonna last three weeks. Like, you know, we can come back within the, the three weeks. We'll be gone in three weeks anyway. Fair enough. I mean... I will... <laughs> I will I will agree that uh, if this will last in three weeks, it should be more than what we're required to do. We do have our own purposes to fulfill here. I mean, yeah. I mean, I also don't want to die to another bunch of those uh, plants people, so I kind of do want to get to the town. Bardakov just has this, like, <laughs> bewildered look on his face. He's gesturing at the cart and then gesturing back towards the winery. He's like, but we can't go back. The point of order, is there a horde of lights and druids on our tail? Uh, no. They are not following you. No shot. <laughs> look, these are difficult times for everybody. We don't want to be here any more than you yeah. do. Yeah, sorry to, uh, you know, tell you this, Sam, but I think we gotta go to, uh, town. Sam stays quiet. We all must make sacrifices, Sam. You've done your job. You've done more than enough. I'll crack the reins. Wait, I, oh, okay. Uh, the, I don't know why you're cracking the reins when I'm in the seats, but, uh... <laughs> Wait, I, thought, I thought you were on the horse. I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, I am on the horse. I forgot you have the reins. Okay. So you roll away from the winery. The Mardikovs emerging from the forest, watching confused and bewildered as you leave. <laughs> Stroud would be proud. <laughs> yeah, don't give a shit about the people, guys. Let's just do our job. I default to what the rest of us want. I understand that we, some of us, want to get home more than others. Yeah, I just don't want to die, you know what I'm saying? Look, we don't know who these people are, what they want, or what they're doing. We're not here to ensure a Peruvia's wine supply. We're here to get going. I agree. <laughs> I mean, Somehow. if we go back, we go back. We'll probably have to, you know, get more wine, which, you know, I'm okay with as long as, you know, we get the wrong cut of wine, but... By the time we get back, the wine, the poisoned wine would probably be distributed by then, and many people would either get sick or die. I mean, I do love me a nice uh, bottle of wine, but, you know, I can live without it. It's not about the wine! <laughs> not my vampire, not my castle. No, so true. Sam, Sam throw, takes his shades off, throws it, revealing another pair of shades. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite an intriguing individual. So, with three barrels of wine. You don't have to get the shades back. (laughs) Sorry, I've just got to find a wagon now. We messed up the campaign. We have to make the DM look for a wagon. I had that moment of conflict where it's like, this is definitely what Veronis would be thinking, but man, the DM's not going to like it. You all can do what you want to do. Let's 
see how this affects what happens later. Yeah, this definitely feels like it's going to come back to haunt us. Oh, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, you all have recovered. You've done your job. You did what you came here to do. Um, gonna, you're heading back to Kresk with wine. Man, the, those blights are going to bite us in the ass later. I can already feel it, too. I can hear the uh, Fallout 3 negative karma sound playing. Let's just hope the Mardukov's good graces aren't something you all needed, right? Oh, we weren't worried about that. We know, yeah, we sure. know, we know they're going to give us our, their good graces. Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. Duh. Uh, definitely, definitely not allies you all needed to make. Duh. Oh, yeah. Allies, <laughs> what? What? What are you talking about? Allies? <laughs> I mean, for all we actually knew, they were in league with the Blights. I mean, come on. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what if the Druids owned the winery? Huh? Did we find any poison? No. Yeah, we suspected, you know, poison. Was there really any? Come on. I reject your reality and substitute my own. Oh, yeah. Certainly an interesting... Certainly the first time I've had that happen. It's for certain. Oh, my God. I'm not even mad that we're the first, to be honest. I mean, it's it's rare that you walk into a dungeon scenario and the prize is literally in front of you. Yeah. From the get-go. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, the the wine's right there. Ah, fuck it. Let's just not do the dungeon, guys. It's not poisoned? And it's yeah. already on a cart? And there's horses two feet? No, <laughs> that no just, just not... Oh, I gotta uh, do a dexterity check? Oh, this is easy. Just not help the, not help the poor winery owners actually get the use of their winery back. Just leaving them on the side of the road confused and sad. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like not our problem. problem. Yeah, it's not our problem, you know. These people yeah. could could do the sober up. Okay. Too much wine is what made me lose some of my limbs in my eye. And have is that what did it? Excuse it was, me. It was the instigator. I know I've gotten drunk once or twice, but like. That made you lose a limb and an eye? That and the marionettes I was trying to control. You lost your limbs in a drunk puppeting accident? <laughs> yes. That's what I'm thinking. What the? How does one <laughs> lose limbs in a drunk puppeting accident? It is a long, longer story than I'd like to recant here. Just know that they're probably better off not drinking so much wine. I mean, are you gonna tell this in like a hotel and not, you know, us driving a fucking cart? Like... Driving is a bad idea. Get that horse. I mean... <laughs> I've never been drunk while driving, but you know. It's... It can happen. Ask Sam. You're drunk, you say the wrong word in animal speech, and well, there go the horses kicking your friends. Whenever I get drunk and I'm performing, people just think I'm, you know, drunk and performing. Like, I've never had, you know, <laughs> actual consequences from this, you know. What is this? Are really drunk? What's happening here? <laughs> 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 We're uh, talking backstories. <laughs> oh, you're absent. <laughs> uh, these glasses change this. Glasses change the person. Sam. I must say, we are grateful for your skills in speaking with animals. It's a gift and a curse, unfortunately. Indeed. Sometimes the animals don't just shut up. Just stay away from the wine. What? I, I mean, I, I don't worry about this. He's just talking about he got drunk. And, uh, apparently he lost his eye and a limb to a uh, puppet. <laughs> I, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, 
I hope we remember these moments all the way to the end of the campaign. <laughs> oh my god. This is the most chaotic Curse of Strahd campaign and I love it. <laughs> we want to be moving right now, DM, or are we rooting for you? Nope, you're moving. Y'all oh, are okay. moving. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so right around there, everybody, I need you all to make perception checks, all of you. Okay. All right. Oh my god. It just feels like by leaving that winery, I, I feel like bad things are going to happen to them. Oh. And it's totally going to come back. Essentially, to I feel like, yeah. so you would all be aware of the decision you just made, right? You know that, some, that there was a lot of wine still in there, the entire supply for the for Barovia and yeah. that these yeah. druids were in there intent to poison it. So yeah. that is happening, like, right now. <laughs> I, I think Aurelia would be completely aware yeah. of, like, what she just did, but it's like... Eh, what is alcohol but poison? Adding extra yeah. poison just makes it stronger alcohol. Yeah, you know. It's poisoning the poison. Yeah, she would have exactly. had no. Yeah, she would assume the poison is just for the, you know, the people in the forest and not the wine. So. Sam knows how destructive druids can get, so he's pretty upset. Negative five friendship points for Sam. But we, we could all it. argue with each other about it later. You'll get over it, Sam. I promise. I mean, we'll probably be back. Let's be real. Back to what? <laughs> like, I'm like, what is I the mean... back? <laughs> the like... winery, maybe? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the consequences are the consequences. Yeah, consequences are consequences, man. Don't... Perception checks bear any fruit, DM? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, Sam, you would be the first one to get the whiff of wolf on the whiff air. Whiff of wolf. Whiff of wolf. As you're passing through a particularly narrow section of the old Svalish road heading back up north, about to make your way back to the crossroads, um, you get the sensation, you can, you can smell them on the air, about a half dozen, if not more, canine creatures slinking about alongside your wagon. Yeah. Alright. Uh, I'll put them out. The horses are also getting a little jittery. They've obviously also caught, or it has also obviously caught the scent. Right, well, we'll come to the bridge. I imagine to slow down a little bit. Um, this would have. I'm sorry. I I called this out quite a bit before that. So back around here is where we'd be. Yeah. Okay. Well, I imagine we'll just keep going on as fast as we can. Okay. Um, any spurring of the horse to go faster, anything like that? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go as fast as I feel like I can push these horses. Okay. Not being a particularly skilled wagon right, uh, right. driver. Okay. Um. Let's go ahead and. So driving the horses as fast as you reasonably can. Go ahead and. Make a dexterity. Yeah, dexterity is for driving stuff. Make a dexterity check for me. I will give oh, you guidance. Boy. So, Varanus, as you are pushing the wagon onward, Sam getting the whiff of these wolves on the air, just as Sam relays that information to you, um, you begin to try and press the horses just a little bit harder, and you do not see the divot in the road ahead before it's too late. The wagon rolls through it. You hear the telltale cracking of wood giving under too much pressure. Wagon sags heavily to the right and grinds to a halt. I can fix it, but I need time. 
mean, do you need us to, like, you know, protect you? Or... Considering what Sam saw, probably. Alright, I'm gonna slowly get off the horse and kind of do a perception check to see if I see any wolves. Yeah, yeah. same. Um, we got you, Lulu. Carlotta's so tiny. I mean, it was gonna be a four anyway, so I see nothing. Should I also roll here? Yep. Everybody that's looking for wolves, make a perception check. Sam, you already know you're out there, so you're good. Mm-hmm. My specialty. All right, Veronis, you're trying... Are you asse you're assessing the damage to the cart? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Make a perception or investigation check. Also, Colorado wants to be all tiny, and I don't know how to fix it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'll go ahead and fix that right now. It's better. I could have used that check earlier. All right, Veronis. Um, the axle is intact, which is the main thing that you were worried about. Um, the wheel itself has been broken. Um, it is repairable with the materials that you have nearby. With an 18, you can tell that it'll take you about 10 to 15 minutes to fix it, at least. Can I fix it faster with mending? With mending? I would say that it would take at least four castings of mending to fix it. So that's four minutes. Yeah. So I guess the answer to your question would be yes, you can do it faster with mending. Okay, then I will start. I'll take out my woodcarver's tools and start doing little runes and start to magically put the wheels back together. Okay. And with that, you all begin to hear sound of leaves rustling foliage snapping under pod feet and low growls begin to emerge from the woods around you all and we are now going to roll initiative alright with those perception checks you all are not surprised you are fully aware of the situation that is evolving around you Uh, am I gonna roll initiative, or am I gonna? I yes, mean, yes, you can roll it. You will. You will also roll initiative. Uh, you will need to use your action to cast mending if that is what you are doing. Well, mending takes a minute to cast, so. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like one of the few cantrips that has a one minute cast of time. So, I mean, that being the case, I might as well just fight and then fix it. That makes sense. Unless sort this of sense. is like a continuous, uh, you know, horde mode. Your slow defender can also repair. Hmm. Uh, can it? Yes. It has. I mean, you can cast can repair. spells <laughs> through it. I don't know if. You know, casting mending through a uh, familiar like that would make it quicker, but. It has the ability to fix itself, but it can't cast mending. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't... It has an intelligence of four, so... <laughs> yeah. The magical mechanism inside of the vendor stores 2d8 plus uh, proficiency bonus hit points to itself or to one construct or object within five feet of it. Oh! Nice. I... Wow! How did yeah, I yeah. never know about that clause? Huh. That is, in fact, good. So... So now we're talking about hit points. What would this do, DM? Um, so I would say that it would basically be doing the exact same thing that mending does. So... If it can do that as an action. So it would have the equivalent effect of mending as an action. Let me check it real quick. Which repair. Okay, so it can do it three times a day. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say that the that the um, steel defender can use all three of its actions to repair it, and if it does so, the wheel will be fixed. It can use its three a day for it. Okay then. And it looks like we're still missing Veronis from the initiative. Oh, I saw it. I rolled it. Oh, I didn't have the token. Okay, go ahead and reselect it. We'll get you back in at 17. Don't 
Sorry, I've never played D&D before. <laughs> that makes what sense. What is a D&D? Okay, Veronis will change that to 17 for you. Sword it. All right. Bolvar, as the wolves begin to creep out from the woods, you are up first. Oh boy, um, I don't have too many spell slots. I will uh, move back, and from here, um, ooh, here, <laughs> uh, the wolf that is to the easternmost, I can't ping it, but, uh, not sorry, uh, westernmost wolf, I will chill touch. Okay. The big boy or the smaller, smaller one to the west? smaller one to the west you got it what do you are you guys gonna focus fire on the big one before i do anything uh, we certainly can all right I mean, we'll yeah. focus fire on the big one so i'll move here and shoot the big one okay. 14 14 hits six necrotic and right. that will end my turn it yelps ron is you're up I wanted to uh, yell out to everybody, protect the horse. And I'm going to get my crossbow and shoot it at the big one. Okay. Fourteen hits. Eight piercing. Use my bonus action to order my steel defender over to the wheel, and it'll use its first repair. Really, uh... Alright. I am gonna cast Bane on three wolves. So, one, two, and three. I'm gonna cast Bane. Okay. So, they gotta make a, a Christmas saving throw um, against 13. Okay. Damage. And we'll go ahead and drop a red dot on if they fail. If they fail, they have to take a D4 off of each attack roll and saving throw they make. Okay. Two of them do, and, in fact, fail. And that's going to be my turn. Brings us to the wolves. Oh, you know what? I need to get Ez and Petra in this initiative. So real quick, I'll just have Ez act before she gets going. Just step up and go after this first wolf here. Um, anywhere in the bushes is difficult terrain. Okay. Drops a wolf. Nice job, Ed. Does bring us to those wolves. Yeah, it's going to climb up onto the cart. feet movement. Nice. All right. One of them bites it as... Oh, no. Set up. Hit. 
eight piercing. It tries to drag Ez down to the ground. Down she goes. Right. Uh oh. Ez is dragged down to the ground by the wolf. She is struggling to get back to her feet, but is having a hard time. She is prone. Steel Defender, bite attack for it. Team to hit the seal defender. Even with Bane? Oh, yeah, that is. Oh, with Bane. Let me go ahead and take that off real quick. Minus four or D4? Uh, D4. 17 to hit. Well, it's. Okay. For seven piercing, we need a strength save from the seal defender. That is a fail. The steel defender is prone. Wolf that jumped up onto the cart is going to take a bite at Veronis. Veronis, that is a 15 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. For seven piercing and a strength save, please. Fourteen is a success. You stay on your feet. Bolivar, you have two of them taking bites at you. All right. Veronis, it's a 15 and a 13. Uh, you said Veronis or? Bolivar? I'm sorry, Bolivar. Okay. Um, uh, the, the 13 misses, the other one hits. Okay. The 15 is a six piercing and a strength save, please. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't have my uh, major armor, so both hit. Okay. So 11 total and a strength save. 11 total. Okay. And strength save. All right. Uh, strength save. Forgot to roll Petra's important rolls. In the long rest. I'll do those now. Oh my god. Oof. Oh, oh my god. Zero. Wow. Wow. So Petra's got two terrible rolls to use for importance. Uh, Bolivar, unless you would like to use your sessional, you are knock prone. Um, yeah, I'll use my sessional. Okay. You do to me now that our party lost a lot of hit points. The total. Yeah, that was a big that was a big round for the wolves, for sure. Okay, that is their turn though. That is all of them. Brings us to Petra who is going to Ray of Frost, the one that has Ez on the ground. It's for three. Brings us to the big wolves. Jeez, they have such high movement speed. It is going to get its oh, hind God. legs up onto the back of this cart and take a bite at Petra. Misses with an eight to hit. The next one here is in fact going to charge at that big old hunk of meat that is the horse. No. <laughs> Seven to hit, it's going to miss. Brings us to Sam. Hmm. Um, Does the horse get to fight back? Uh, yeah, uh, we can roll initiative for the horse. Oh, uh, I mean, why don't we just have it react? It will attack anything that attacks it, so I'll make a hoof attack against the direwolf fort right now. Hooves. 14 to hit, which I believe does hit a direwolf. Yep, for 9 bludgeoning. I love it. Okay, Sam. Uh, Unicorn Totem, like, right in the middle so everyone can get a... Okay. Go right there. Um. And then. 
then I'm going to... Let's do this. Go all the way to Ez. I'll take that. <coughs> that opportunity, Zach. It is... One of these days I'll figure out that those macros are broken. <laughs> it is only a 7 to hit. That'll miss. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to cure wounds here. Nice for 10. It right. does get her back to full. And everyone gets 3 healing. Nice. Let me double check that. So everyone else, everyone gets her, everyone gets three healing. So defender, Varanas, um, yeah, um, and I'll just stand here. <clears throat> and my turn. Okay. Um, I get, I get three as well. Yes, everyone, everyone gets three. Bolivar, you are up. Okay. Um, darn. I'm really low on spell slots. So I'm going to move. I'll risk the attacks of opportunity. I'm going to move down here. Try and attack. And I'll, uh, before your bonuses, let me know what you roll. Before bonuses, we are well. They have their pack tactics, so. Oh shit. Sure. <laughs> um, then I'll shield. I'll shield regardless. It's so. a twenty-three and an eight. Oh my god! All right, twenty-three hits. Okay. For five piercing. Uh, did you want to shield? Right. Yeah. Okay. So that uh, twenty-three still hits, obviously. So five piercing. Yeah. And a strength five save. Piercing. As you try to get away. Oh, right. oh boy. Okay, good. Uh, 19. Hey, yeah, oh, it's yeah. up. Hell another yeah. zero. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, so I'm here. I will uh, shoot at the one that I shot before. Can I, can I have line of sight to him? Uh, to which one? Uh, the one that's injured. So I guess the one to the west. This one, yeah, definitely. Definitely All right, so line of sight. So I will uh, chill touch for 15 a hit. 15 hits. Three damage. That's all I did. <laughs> and that'll okay. that'll end my turn. So back to Ez, who was going to use half of her movement to stand up, and then stab. And does not hit. 25 does. For nine, and that does drop another wolf. Is to Varanus. As this wolf sinks its teeth into my arm, I'm going to return the favor and bite him <laughs> on the back. Sessionals I'm going to use my sessionals, yes. 23 hits. That I, I can give you mine, but that's up to you. Seven, okay. And that'll give me plus seven to my next attack. Nice. Or skill check. Or I could heal myself, can't I? No, I'll put it on my attack. Okay. Uh, steel Defender. Hmm. Should he keep... Yeah, he'll use his uh, next repair. Okay. Actually, no. Can I change my mind? Yeah, of course. I am going to instead use my bonus action to cast Sanctuary on Horse. Okay. Sanctuary on Horse, nice. Okay. Which which I just suggested should attack every time it's attacked, so that may not be a smart move. Yeah, it'll be good oh, for well. the next time it's attacked, yeah. I said it, yep. It will protect it from the next time the wolf tries to bite it. And then it will reactively attack back. Which 
Queen Elizabeth, it'll have it for a turn, which is important. Pretty sure a lucky hit from this wolf could just drop it. Okay. Anything else from Varanus? I'm done. Really? I am going to cast Dissident Whispers on the uh, wolf next to me. Okay. Uh, let's make it level 2. Uh, 15, uh, 13 wisdom save. My wolves are broken. It's a 13. Oh, that's gonna make it. I don't know if make it is break it, but... Okay, so half that damage is still good. Um, so that yeah. is, what, 21 points rounded down to 10? Alright. Um... And then I'm gonna give Bardic Inspiration to Bolivar just in case, and I'm gonna end my turn. Okay, brings us to the wolves. Try to take a... It's already got the Steel Defender. The Steel Defender got up, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so I feel like this wolf, having bitten into the Steel Defender, realizing it is not fleshy, is going to try to take a bite out of either Petra or Varanus. Varanus, pick high or low. I tax Petra. Can the still defender use its reaction to oppose disadvantage? That it can. At disadvantage, it is a 14 to hit. Petra uh, casts thing. shield. Uh, D4. Uh, oh, minus D4? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if it can, yeah. Petra does not need to use shield. Yeah. Okay. Ronis, the wolf that is on you, attempts to take a bite. Ah. It's only a six to hit. That misses. Really, uh, you've got a wolf in your face that's gonna try to take a bite of you. That is, oof, that's a 20 to hit. That's gonna hit me. Eight piercing and a strength save, please, as this one approaches. Aurelia, you are knocked prone. This wolf looms over you before also trying to take a bite. Okay, that even at advantage is only an 8 to hit. That's gonna miss. Okay, and that is it. There is only, there's those four wolves remaining. They have all attacked. Brings us to Petra, who is going to shocking grasp the wolf that's right in her face. And... One lightning, what the shit? <laughs> At least it's something. Yeah. Okay. Brings us back to the dire wolves. Um, so. For Sanctuary, if I remember correctly, it has to make a wisdom saving throw, because it is going to try to attack the horse. And if it yeah. fails the wisdom saving throw, it has to try and attack a different target. But since there's no targets that it can attack other than the horse, it will just fail the attack. Yeah. Yep. Sanctuary is such a good level one spell. It is. Okay, it fails. The attack goes nowhere. Horse does not attack back as it was not bitten. Sweet. You know what? I think the horse... Let's go ahead and give it a 50-50 chance if the horse fights back during this one. So... 11 and higher, it attacks back. 10 and lower, it does not. Oh, no! Nice. Oh, no! That means Sanctuary drops. That's the big issue, but... but isn't... Oh. So the wolf doesn't didn't attack it at all, though. That's oh, how Sanctuary right. works. Yeah, it kind of... You're right. It didn't attack it at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the, the horse would have hit it if it did attack, dealing another 8 points of bludgeoning. Would you rather have another round of safe horse or eight bludgeoning gone from the dire wolf? Um, safe horse. Just keep sanctuary. Safe, yeah. Yeah. Okay, safe, safe horse. horse. Okay. Now this one back here. This is the horse that takes us to Castle Ravenloft, guys. <laughs> this is our horse now. Yeah, what are we gonna call this? Like bury the horse? He's gonna take us to Barovia? Just took the Mardikov's horse. This is our yeah, horse I mean, now. This game is Barry. So it's our horse now. <laughs> Sam, you're up. 
Bob Wait, Rob, did the dire wolf Bob. attack at all? Uh, yeah, it missed Petra and okay. then uh, Sanctuary from the wolf. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just laughing over here over. A... His name is Barry. <laughs> uh, healing word to Boulevard. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and everyone gets additional three healing as as well as Boulevard. Thank you. So. Thank you. Um, to be fair, I think that's all I'll need for now. Thank you. Um, and as an action, I think I'll just, <clears throat> no, I'm on the other side of the cart. Uh, I'm going to loop around this way and. Bob Ruff, Markov. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was going to call it like Barry Manilow or something, but like, that's just better. 17 is a hit, Sam. Uh, six piercing on this Which one, one was it? For that one, okay. We drag it towards you? Yep. Ten feet or five feet, Thornwood drags him? Five. I don't know. I believe Thornwood is five. Ten feet. Oh, ten. Yeah, it's ten, okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, and... I'm just gonna say as I, like, kind of wrangle him, hey, Cool it! We're just trying to get through! And I'll end my turn. Yeah, it would snarl at you, Sam. You get the impression that these wolves have a very, a very direct malice behind their eyes. Something they've not experienced in the animal world before. Bolivar, you are up. All right. Um, I'm going to move up here, try to shoot the one that's mostly injured okay. to the northeast of Aurelia. Uh, shoot him with a chill touch. Twenty-four to hit. That's certainly a hit, and that does take him 40. down. Perfect for necrotic, and then uh, I'm gonna move right here between the dire wolf and the other wolf, and I'm gonna start making sounds. Come, the shadow awaits. See if they'll try and attack me. That's my turn. Okay, go ahead and make. I think I want to say an intimidation check. Okay, cool. Intimidation. <laughs> hey. Excellent. Excellent. They are unbothered by your display. Okay. Fair an enough. attempt was made. <laughs> okay, brings us to Ez. Gonna put in some work on this dire wolf. Uh, 10 is unfortunately a miss. But 24 is a inspiration. Uh, NPCs do not get sessional, unfortunately. I mean, she also gets sneak at least. She does get sneak on this one, yeah. Uh, so 9 piercing and then another 2d6 on top of that. 14. Okay. Ronis, you're up. Right. Well, I still got this guy in my face, so I can't really shoot the dire wolf. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be a gentleman this time. I'm going to, uh, unscrew the dagger out of my cane and give him a stab. It's the wrong stat block. Uh, Uh, standby technical difficulties. You're good. Twenty-two's a hit. Okay, it is still up, but it is hurt badly. And the steel defender. And steel defender, with my bonus action. is going to take another repair action on the cart. Okay. Aurelia. Alright. I am gonna 
used half my movement to get up, and I'm gonna stab the wolf in front of me with a uh, rapier. Okay. 19 hits. Alrighty. Okay, for six piercing. And that's gonna be my turn. Back to the wolves. Alright. Sam, the one that you dragged over towards you is going to take a bite at you. Alright. It is a 22 to hit. That hits. Oh. That's not going to matter if Bane, I think. Yeah. Bane, Max, I could get it down to would be an 18. So six piercing and a, cons and a uh, strength save, please. Uh, sessional. Okay. Stay on your feet. Raylia, the one in your face, tries to take a bite. 14 to hit. Uh, that's... Uh, yeah, that's gonna hit. Four piercing and another strength save, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, session? No? no yeah, no, I'll, I'll go prone again. Okay. Doing well in the concentration saves, though. Oh, yeah. And Varanus, the badly wounded one in front of you. Ooh, that's great. Um, can Petra do portent on an attack roll? Checking that now. Petra makes that attack roll a two. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a miss. And that does bring us to Petra's turn. And she is going to... I tried to chill touch the thing in front of Varanus. She is selfless. Shock and grasp. 17 hits. Varanus, one in front of you goes down. And now the dire wolf attacks Petra. <laughs> Ooh, 19 to hit. Petra takes 12 piercing and it's pulled to the floor of the cart. Petra is hurt bad. Dire wolf in front of the horse is going to make a wisdom save against Sanctuary. And a 15 for the wisdom save? Yeah, it succeeds. Okay. So, bite attack against the horse. Nine to hit does miss. We'll give the horse another 50-50 chance to see if it attacks or not. So, 11 and higher, it does not attack. 10 and lower, it does. Take it, take it. It crits the wolf for 18 bludgeoning. Shit. Fucked him up. All right, that is going to bring us to Sam. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just gonna healing word Petra from here. Okay. Uh, she gets six plus three healing, so she gets nine total healing. Oh, nice. Everyone else, everyone else gets three healing. Okay. Everyone? Yeah, everyone else. So every time I cast a spell while well, in the unicorn aura, everyone in the unicorn aura gets um, gets healing based off of my uh, druid level. Nice. All right, Sam, anything else? Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to... I can't really thorn whip from, from this close. Oh, wrong button. Thorn Whip is a... Would it be considered a range attack? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and check the spell out. Well, it's also a miss regardless, so... Make a melee spell attack. Okay. So, but 12 does miss, the, unfortunately. One, okay, then I'll just end it there. Boulevard. All right. Uh... Oh. 
um, the dire wolf that is attacking the horse. I think I'm going to try and mesmerize it. So I will use an action to try and hypnotize. So it needs to... Um, Let me make a saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. It's a 14. My DC is... Damn, you made it. All right. <laughs> Darn it. Well, uh, that is my turn then. As... N does drop the dire wolf. By the way, I know, I, I know I've mentioned this before, but just as a reminder, anyone that would like to control either Ez or Petra during combat is more than welcome to. But with that, Petra is going to move up to here. Short sword, hit for eight. Wow. Petra, Ez is putting in the work over here. Okay, brings us to Veronis. Alright, I'm going to stand tall on top of the bell, aim over the horse's head, and shoot at the dire wolf. Okay. Oof. Not with that. Mm. Unfortunate. Um, okay, then I'll just have the steel defender finish fixing the cart. Okay, yep, the cart is fixed. Uh, that's my turn. Really? All right, time to get my ass back up, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stab again. Okay. Sessional. Seventeen hits. Four piercing. That does take that wolf down. All right, I am going to end my turn on that then. And I believe that is six dead wolves. Yep, that is in fact six dead wolves. Brings us to Petra, who is going to get up in the cart. Very much like Veronis, stand up on top of the barrels and take a shot at the wolf with Ray of Frost. It's unfortunately going to miss, brings us to that dire wolf. Wisdom save to attempt to attack the Horse fails. That's Boulevard instead. Boulevard's only a seven to hit. Does not hit. Sam, you're up. Um, guess I'll get closer. Uh, yeah, sure. Just get here. Whip. 20's a hit. hit. Whoops. Four, okay. Uh, can't really pull him anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, just in a healing word, Boulevard here. Uh, yeah. Well, nah. We're gonna, we'll be fine for now. Okay. Uh, and my turn there. Boulevard. All right. Time for more chill touch. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know what? Since I'm a disadvantage, I'll just use my staff. Okay. So let's try that. I did give you Bardic just in case, by the way, so. Oh, thank you. Yes, I will definitely use that. Uh, here we go. 18. 18 oh my hit. god, for zero? Oh no! <laughs> For zero damage. Yeah. I probably should have healed you, huh? <laughs> it's okay. I'm I'm gonna distract him. Don't worry <laughs> about healing me. I can uh, I can probably tank the hits. It's okay, That's guys. I just poked him. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, provoked the bear or the wolf in this case. All right, I'll pass. Okay. Yeah, just we Runs. All right. 
I'm going to take another shot. Simple. 15's a hit. Down it goes. All right, everyone. So, with the threat of the wolves gone and your cart repaired, you are all ready to head back onto the road, which we will do as soon as we get back from our break. All right. All right. All right, everyone. We'll be back in 10. Back in 10. Sounds good. All right. So we are back. Um, with your shipment of wine secured and protected, you all leave the Wizard of Wines and the Mardikov family behind you. Hopefully it's a deal whatever threat remains at the winery themselves. That's right, he was famous. Oh yeah! <laughs> I forgot! Um, so. Judging by the travel, the time that you've made so far, how far you've come, how long it took you to get here on foot, um, it'll, you'll be back in Kresk within the hour. As you all pass over that bridge once more, the Raven River crossroads with the weather-worn signposts, Kresk pointing towards the west, Valakai to the east, and the Wizard of Wines sign now detached and on the floor, pointing south. Can somebody please roll a d20 for me? As you all approach... Raven River Crossroads. Uh, you've already rolled the d20, so somebody else. Alright. Seven. Oh, it looks like, uh... And yeah, Veronica's got there with the 15. Veronica's got it. You have a choice. So... As you're all rolling over the bridge, on the opposite end of it, there is a corpse face down in the middle of the road. Oh. Keep going. I don't know if I want to uh, mess with the uh, dead body. The corpse was clearly torn to pieces by wolves. But we didn't encounter anybody on the road before. No, you did not. Oh, Hi. I know. Uh, Carlotta. Send my steel defender to pick up the body. Okay, so stopping the carrot, stopping the cart, letting the steel Let's defender off to go are, investigate. Are we stopping? Quickly, just look around to see if anyone's like watching. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. You can do sort of advantage with that sniffer of yours. Mm hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Um, you don't smell any other people. The only thing that you smell is the dead body. You don't smell any other people, any wolves, any animals, anything like that around you. Just to, to start with, I'll just have uh, the Steel Defender just kind of hold it up by its shoulders facing us. Okay. Um, it is a young man. Appears to be wearing the same style of clothing as the Mardikovs were, um, marking him as a Barovian native. Uh, yeah, he was ripped to, ripped to shreds by, by wolves. His left foot is missing below the ankle. He has bite marks covering his body. Looks like the final blow was uh, a jagged wound to the throat. Oh. From my uh, fresh kill? Make a medicine check. Does it... <clears throat> is it... Does it look like it was actually wolves, or made to look like wolves? 
nature well, check. Well, it was jagged. If it's jagged, I'm sure it's not uh, regular teeth. Definitely wolves, Sam. Oh. Okay. I mean, Avaranus, I difficult to tell. More than more than a few hours, less than a few days. Does the corpse react to anything? No. Okay. Well, um, we should probably see what it, what he had on him. Maybe we'll figure out where he was from. Yeah. Agreed. I assume that the nearby wolves probably uh, killed him. <clears throat> yes. Um, so I'll have the defender carry him back to the cart and just kind of lay him on the bridge wall. I'll also mention that um, <clears throat> when interact interacting with that one wolf, um, it had malice in its eyes, as you said it? Yeah. Was that really yeah. So normally wild animals don't tend to have malice. Do you think some evil druid is controlling them? I mean, is there that much of a difference between malice and hunger? I mean... I think so. Malice it implies evil intent. Hunger is just desperation. But, like, why would they have intent to kill us, is the question. Why, indeed. I'll start uh, rifling through the chewed-up body. Okay. There is a pouch made of flesh with a sinew drawstring in his oh. left jacket pocket. Oh. Uh, Open it up. Inside is what looks like a hand pie. A little handheld pastry. It smells delicious. Oh. Uh, uh, one other point of order. The wolves did not eat this man. He doesn't appear to have any chunks of his flesh missing. Aside from the missing foot, wherever that may be. But um, the wolves did not eat this individual. Huh. Why would the wolves kill him and not eat? I mean, well, the pie, first of all. I yeah. mean, wolves are scavengers. I mean, what if they're like kill on set wolves? I mean, maybe they had a meal already and, you know, they were threatened by this person. That's fair. They could just be territorial. Well, um. Perhaps we should burn the body. Uh, Let's burn the body. The body. I agree. I'm gonna eat the pie. Screw it. I want to see what this pie is all about. Brilliant! Grabs the pie out of Ross's hand. And yeah, you know what? I'm going to just, without question, just take the pie out of his hand and just eat it. Take a bite while I'm still holding it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm just going to take this real quick. I'm going to take the hand pie out of your hand and just eat it. Please, no wisdom saving throw, I swear. Oh, it's going to be... There is a saving throw involved here. I... Oh, no. <laughs> I th it's full of worms. I hate it here. I really didn't think this was one of those pies. Um, really, I do need you to make a wisdom saving throw. It's amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just going to... You know what? I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm just going to let it happen. So, it is wonderfully delicious. It 
is absolutely probably one of the best things that you have ever tasted. And you all would see Aurelia kind of slump back in her chair and be overcome by this feeling of just bliss and <laughs> well-being. Everything feels perfect. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Everything is as it should be. Um, Aurelia, that is how that is how you feel about all of this right now. Um, the rest of you would just kind of see her slump back into her chair and kind of get a very vacant look on her face. Aurelia, that effect lasts for 20 minutes, during which time you are incapacitated. I can't believe I got high from a moon pie, man. Why would you do that? <laughs> Is she okay? I'm, I'm not responding. I'm just sitting there, just laid back. Uh, she appear to be in distress at all? Uh, no, just, I'm just like she, I'm just sitting there relaxing. She looks quite happy, actually. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Are, are you okay? No response. Have you guys run into any other, I guess, weird pastries like this before? Before I joined, at least? Well, yes, but I don't think it's related to that. Cupcakes. I just heard rumors. That there's a mad baker out. The last time I trust a pastry. Aurelia, once you come out of that, I need you to make a another wisdom save. I'm sorry, I mixed it up. Um, it was a constitution save first and then a wisdom save. So if you'd like, you can go uh, ahead and make your constitution save now, and then we'll use the wisdom for the second part. Uh, 16. Okay. Aurelia, you had the effects of that pastry on you for... We'll call it 20 minutes. Um, for future reference, it is going to be 1d4 plus 4 hours going forward. Um, okay. Sorry, I had to find the find the handout for it. But Aurelia, as soon as you snap out of it, you have a longing to return to that blissful, peaceful place that you were just in. Right now, it's just a gentle ache in the back of your mind. But... You definitely do desire to return to that peaceful place as soon as you can, as soon as you have the opportunity to. You know, that was pretty nice. I, I, I want to be able to uh, go back there. Well, I, I'm just saddened by this uh, gray yeah, area. Exactly. The grayness of this place would definitely be oppressive now. It's just lacking life, lacking lacking any real substance to it. It just feels fake compared to that wonderful place you just were. Did you go somewhere? I, I mean, I was... It was pretty bright. I was uh, at, back at my camp. Uh, I was just relaxing, really. Well, I, I I just want to go back to uh, seeing the color for camp again. Damn. Please don't put anything strange in your mouth again. I mean, that was pretty tasty, to be fair. I mean... You were unresponsive for 20 minutes. Was that, wait, that was 20 minutes? Yes, at least. It's hard to tell sometimes, but... I mean, if that was 20 minutes, I want to take, you know, another 20 of those minutes and, uh, you know, just relax again in my own little headspace. Oh, um, I would... It, I would oh, not so. eat it. I think I should get rid of this pie... Uh, Aurelia ate it. It was it was basically the size of a small pastry. Okay, I thought yeah. it was like a hot pocket. No, just like basically the size of a hot pocket. 
this D and D session is not sponsored by Hot Pockets, by the way. <laughs> but it should be. Mm, should uh, a different thought. If the individual we found is from Crest, maybe they would appreciate his return in whatever state he's in. I mean. Are we sure we want to be carrying a dead body into a uh, town we've barely been into? Perhaps not, but I think it should be fairly obvious we didn't kill him. Although I could be wrong, these aren't exactly reasonable people. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to uh, bring a body like this into a, uh, you know, a town, so... I smell. Nobody has any objections. Perhaps I'll just leave him in the river. Nature will sort itself out. No objections here. Yeah, just the leaving. Mm, uh, maybe, maybe not in the, in the river. That'll that'll mess up some kind of you know ecosystem and whatnot. Very as, druid thing uh, to say. Please don't foul yep, the river. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, as Sam is trying to, like, his best to keep that persona, but his druid, you know, lineage is kind of kicking in there. Well, um, all right, I'll just have Carlotta throw him into the woods. So, making your way back to Kresk, um, Ez and Petra have been very quiet this whole time. You can tell that leaving the Mardikovs behind doesn't sit well with them. Um, they're in no position to object, you all are the only people they know here. So, you can tell that it doesn't quite sit well with them. They're kind of whispering amongst each other. Mostly talking about how... You, when you do catch bits and pieces of their conversation, they're mostly talking about how familiar this place seems to Petra, although she's never been here before. She's recognizing landmarks, recognizing the bridge, all of these things. Yeah. Within about another 15 to 20 minutes after leaving the bridge, my time is all wonky here. Let's see how long that would actually take. Say the carts. Yeah, about 15 to 20 minutes. On your pulled cart. You all would once more pull back up in front of the walls of Kresk. Alright, so... As you all pull up out front, it's not long. As you're pulling the wagon up front, it's not very long at all until the gates begin to open for you. And you see the familiar face of the Burgomaster, the mayor of Kresk, peering over the rampart towards you all. There's no arrows pointed at you this time, no hostility, and the gates are being opened for you as you approach. Making your way inside. That individual who first greeted you all when you first arrived here approaches and kind of puts his hand on the horse and steadies. He's like, You all were back so, so quickly. It's wonderful to have you back. Thank you so much for retrieving this. I honestly thought we had seen the last of you, but you will most certainly be valued assets here in this town. How are the Martikovs? Are they safe? Oh, they'll be fine. Just, uh, you know, we got what we wanted, you know. It may, <laughs> may, it may not be a lot of wine, but uh, it'll be enough for a little while. Wonderful, wonderful. In the state of the winery, what was the holdup? What was holding, what was keeping, what was keeping them? Is the winery un intact? 
As far as uh, we know, yes. We don't. I know. believe it is for now. Um. They had been attacked. There was damage. Oh yes, we had we had feared that they had that something may have happened. Bandits or brigands, perhaps. I mean, you could say that. I mean. They might get attacked again. I mean, we may... I don't know, but... Yes, well, you have re you've re returned our shipment to us as agreed. Welcome into the town. You may even stay a night at our inn for free, free of charge. As a sign of our gratitude. Your church grounds, are they available to the public? I'm afraid not. The Abbey is, well, it's, it's a complicated situation. Why don't you all go ahead and get settled and then we can talk about the Abbey and the Abbot once you've had some time to rest and recuperate. All right. I mean... The Abbot is not That's fond okay. of Unexpected guests. Hmm. What, are we supposed to make, like, an appointment to visit the Abbey, or...? If you would like to visit the Abbot, I suppose I could arrange a visit. I mean, Let's I would like that. to at least the rest tonight. I don't think I'd be, uh, up for seeing the Abbey today. Let the Abbot... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Bar, was there something you wanted to say? Oh, I was saying a rest sounds good. Uh, just let the abbot know that um, we're specialized in dealing with unusual problems, if he's experiencing any of those. Uh, yes, yes. I, 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 I'm not sure what unusual problems he might have for you. He's a rather reclusive man. Yeah, us, you know, not dealing with the uh, blights and druids at the winery. Um, <laughs> Which you didn't say out loud. Which you didn't say out yeah. loud, right. I yeah, was just about I totally to say. Didn't say it. <laughs> um, I mean, it, let's just say we uh, deal in the uh, supernatural. Mm -hmm. These parts haven't had any major supernatural problems in... Well, I'd like to say about their stories. And I remember when I was a small boy, they would warn us about going into the woods alone and whatnot, but everything's been fine. I haven't heard any supernatural events happening, that's for certain. Wolves larger than men. Well, they're usually, they usually keep to themselves in the woods. They very, they've, they haven't attacked anyone in, I want to say, quite some time. I haven't heard any any reports of wolf attacks. We were attacked by the wolves on the way here, so. Oh, you must have provoked them. Perhaps you stumbled into 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 one of their into one of their hovels. I mean, we didn't, but. Uh... That is odd. Why would the Any... wolves <laughs> attack you all? It's what we were wondering. Um, this guy sounds a little bullshitty here. Can I yeah. an inside check? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't use my session. I don't know. Seven. All right. We do only have about a half an hour left in session. <clears throat> no, I already used it. Oh, you already used it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he, uh, you really can't tell one way or another. Uh, as far as you can tell, he seems genuinely surprised by the situation. Um, his questioning doesn't seem like he's trying to hide anything. All right. Again, with the seven, it's difficult to tell for sure. He didn't mean to imply that there is anything unusual. Just uh, wanted to wanted everyone to be aware of our trade, um, not to be alarmed by our practices or implements. You know. Wonderful, wonderful. Of course, of course. Well, it has been a very long time since we've had visitors from outside of the walls come into Barovia, let alone come to Kresk. It's a rather rather old tradition that we have that we are very solitary very selective of who we allow into our community but 
You all have most certainly proven your worth. So, so bravely going forth into the woods alone, covering our wine for us. We are greatly appreciative. The slaughtered ox is just down the way over there. Get yourself a few drinks, something to eat, again, all on me, and a free room for each of you for the night. We certainly appreciate it. Oh, we appreciate this. This will keep our keep our stores plenty for at least, I want to say, at least a month. Very well. And by then, hopefully the Martikovs have worked out whatever issues they have at the winery, and they can begin production again. I don't foresee any issues. This is quite a different welcome than we received when we came by a few days yeah. ago. You must understand, we can't just allow anyone in. As I mentioned, it is part of our tradition that we're very selective of who we allow into our little community here. We need to make sure that anyone that we allow in can contribute and will contribute, is willing to contribute to the betterment of our village, of our town. You've all proven that you most certainly are all of those things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, hopefully the wine will do, uh, fine. Of course, of course, there's very little to do here. It's become, essentially, the only pastime for many people here is to drink away their boredom and their worries. I'm sure you'll be fine. Well, we should really get to our rooms. Of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> Indeed. He yeah, gestures do. down the only main road in the area, and lets you all know that the slaughtered ox is just down the way. How did we? Make, how did we let that slip? I didn't just, feel bad <laughs> until now. Just hey, you know the wine is totally gonna be fine, guys. These people greeted us with weapons. They can't be all soft and doughy now. <laughs> it's not fair. So, Kresk is quite the picturesque little place. It's almost like a, it's almost like they grew a forest inside the walls of their little of their little place here. There's pine trees scattered throughout the village. Small little looks like little family farms interplaced here and there. And it doesn't take long as you all travel down one of the only roads in this town before you come across what sounds like a place where there are people inside, not necessarily being merry, but you can definitely hear people milling about, you hear bottles clanking and whatnot, and over the door is a sign that reads the Slaughtered Ox. We go inside. Yep. Yep. So inside is generally what you would expect from a small town little watering hole type of place. There's about a half a dozen people, all with their heads down. A few of them are leaning back in their chair. Cups of wine, bottles of ale, sitting around on the tables. And when you all walk in, the first thing that you would notice would be that Petra has stopped dead in her tracks. Petra, what's the matter? Are you, uh, good? She is staring at an individual sitting at one of the tables across the way. A man of probably about late 40s, early 50s, right around there. And... Petra is having trouble speaking. You can see her, she's trying to get out a word. And Ez puts a hand on her shoulder and she reaches into Petra's bag and pulls out one of her drawings, one of her charcoal drawings, not any of her professional ones or anything like that, but just one of her little charcoal drawings. And it is a splitting image of the man that's sitting at the table there. Uh, do I notice anything peculiar about the man, or...? He has his head down, his hands kind of 
cradling the top of his head. He has several empty bottles around him. He's obviously been here for quite some time. He looks tired. His hair is stringy, long. It might have been blonde at one point, but now it's indistinguishable from a gray. Looks like he's seen some pretty hard, some pretty hard things in his life. Um, but yeah, mid, early to mid fifties, he probably is. And as you're all looking at him, he groggily looks up, takes a look around, and his eyes stop on all of you. No. No. He stands up so fast that he knocks his chair back. Everyone stops. The entirety of this place goes quiet. It can't be. We got you out. He stumbles towards you all. Trips You've over had a chair. One too many, friend. One too many. Irina. Oh, oh, my. It, oh fuck. No. And he. What? He is looking right at Petra when he says that name. Do I recognize the name Irina in any way? I don't think you would. Okay. But you would, however, recognize... Tatiana. And he, he starts listing off names. And Petra is going pale and paler each name that he lists off. This can't, this can't be. The last time was the last time he's been gone. What are you talking about? Wait. We beat him. We stopped him. The last time. He's crawling at this point on his, he's trying to get up, but he's having trouble balancing on the chairs. Like I failed you. I failed you. So who is this man? He looks at Petra. You must recognize me. Irina, Tatiana, whatever your name is this time. And you hear Petra whisper a name. And then you see the bartender come out from there. Ismark, Ismark. It's time. It's time for you to go up and go to bed. You're obviously seeing things at one too many tonight. Let's get you upstairs. You're like, no, no, we stopped this. We stopped it the last. And as he's crying out these words, the bartender is dragging upstairs. I'm terribly sorry, folks. I'm terribly sorry. Just the town drunk is all. Can I do an insight check on his mark? Yeah. Keep those vagrants at bay. I guess, yes, yes, I'm very, hard. I'm very sorry, sir. We'll keep him out of your way. We've been working very hard. We don't need the, the accosting that this man has been doing. Gravest apologies, gravest apologies. We'll get you all a round of our finest ales. All right, how much do I believe is Mark and him seeing? He is in genuine distress. Um, with a 16, you saw genuine recognition on his face. Yeah. He, I mean, he's obviously extremely drunk. Yeah. So, I mean, he could be imagining it. It's possible. But with a 16, you can tell that as far as he knows, he's being sincere. Okay. Um. As... Do I as he as he's being dragged upstairs, you just hear him yelling out, "We stopped it! Twenty-one years! Twenty-one years! It's been over! It's over!" And then you hear a door slam, and the sound is muffled. Uh, barkeep, barkeep. Um, takes him a minute or two to get back down, but he comes back down. That guy is a madman. Oh, I'm I'm very sorry. A, a local folk hero. You know, one of those types. He he did some he did some impressive things back in the old days, and he lost himself in the drink. And I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
We'll make sure that he stays out of your way. I would like to, um, talk to him in uh, his room if possible. He's not Mm. exactly in a state to have any real conversations. Perhaps wait until until a few hours have gone by and he sobers up and you can go speak to him. Um, I think that would be best. Um, Is he from here? Oh, yes, he's been here his whole life. Of course, he used to have a sister, but she was lost to us many years ago. Um, is that the arena he was talking about? Indeed, indeed it is. I'm, I'm very sorry, ma'am. You look, you look very much like, like, like his, like his departed sister. That must be what the set him off. Help. He needs quite a bit of help. He does, he does. And we will be sure that he gets it. Hmm. How many years ago he said? 21 is what Ismark said. Yeah. What's Petra doing? Her and Ez have sat down and they're going through some of their draw some of her some of Petra's drawings on the table. I'd like oh. to join them. Wait, so okay. Do we are there any of the faces look like Petra's in the drawings or Whenever you see an image of the red haired woman that features in many of her drawings, it's always from behind. Okay. Does Petra look roughly 21? Uh, Petra is 21. Her has told you this back in the back in the mansion. Oh. Ah, uh, yes, the the classic seven deadly sins concept. Yes. <laughs> is that a that's an anime? That's an anime, right? Seven deadly sins. Yeah. An anime. It's an anime, and I think I know what's going on. <laughs> I the, I know exactly what's going on. Uh, hang on. The, the bar, bartender, I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? Johns. <laughs> what was that? Johns. J-O-N-S. Johns. Johns. Thought you said gods. Um, look, <laughs> you said he was a folk hero, right? Yes, yes. Back when I was just a kid, he and this group of, this group of adventurers came through and Oh, they did some great things. They did some great things here. What was their greatest thing? Well, I don't, it's not really something we talk too much about, but there used to be this vampire up on the hill. Terrible sort. Tortured and tormented the people of this place for decades, if not centuries, before these adventurers came along. Them and Ismark and Ismark's departed sister, they... They fought the good fight. They fought the good fight, but... Are you sure you all want to hear this? This is all just... All just stories and fairy tales the old ones like to tell us. I tell us, man. Like... Tell us. No, I, I, I think I just want to talk to him, honestly. What's the vampire's name? Some folks call him the devil. Folks call him the Devil Von Zarovich. His full name was Strahd Von Zarovich. Again, no one's seen or heard anything from that creature if he even exists in over two decades. Is it true that this Strahd had a castle? Oh, his castle is still very much there. And where is it? Over on the other side of this, over on the other side of these lands overlooking a village called Barovia. If you follow this Volich road, you can't miss it. It's rather treacherous, in disrepair. Anyone that's gone venturing in, we haven't heard back from, but again, not many people try to go in. Well, kind of like one of those old haunted houses up on the hill, you know? Sure. Wasn't Barovia mentioned in the mansion? Um, I think it was, right? It was. It was. Um, the connection for Barovia with this place, um, that you all found at the House of Lament, 
was that the House of Lament once existed in Barovia a very, very long time ago. And it was during a war that the owner of the house left, gathered a soul, gathered their group, and went to fight alongside one Strahd von Zarevich. When she returned, her house had been taken over by an evil warlord. Her slaughter of the warlord and anyone else that got in her way is what took that place and sent it into Ravenloft, into the mists. So yes, the House of Lament did once exist here in Barovia, but from what you all found out, that was a very long time ago. Much more than 20, 30 years. Well, the house was a demiplane centered around itself. a number of individuals, yes. I bet you anything that this Barovia is very similarly centered around Strahd. Talking about Which, him like he still exists up there. The boogeyman. Oh, he's going to get you. Would explain the assumption that he's returned. The barkeep looks a little concerned that you're not getting in on the joke with him. I mean, I, I, mean, I have theories too. I mean, which would explain a lot about what we saw. Because the yeah. plane is still here, and it that's really, true. Which, you know... Wait, let me look at those paintings again. I think I'm getting an idea from all this. Um, let's see, there's no face to the woman in the red hair. So are you all leaving the bartender? Yeah. Hans? Yeah, let's go look at the pictures. So, as you all bid farewell to the bartender, um, he was say, we'll have your drinks and your dinner to you momentarily. The Burgomaster has informed us that you, that your meal and your stay is on the house for tonight. Be sure to bring you everything that you need. Uh, the meat, um, would you mind only cooking it very lightly? It's a bit of a preference of mine. Sure, so what, like me medium rare, rare? Rare. Rare, you I, got it. I would also like my meat uh, rare, please. Absolutely. You got some local venison that we've got. It'll be up in just a minute. Whisper fire to it. Um, I would like to do another investigation check on the... Uh... Or a perception check on the paintings to see if I notice anything new. Okay. So as you approach and sit down, I'm assuming all the four of you are sitting down with Petra and um, with Petra and as now. And they have about a dozen pictures splayed out around them. One of them is of this bar. And another is of a much, much younger version of the bartender. Um, maybe 11 or 12 years old. You can tell it's the same individual, even though he is considerably older now, um, just by the facial features, the build. Um, another painting that they have out on the table is of the bridge that you all have crossed over twice now. And so what, what exactly would you like to try and figure out about them? As you're looking at them, Aurelia, these they're not they're, these aren't uh, these are all things that you would just see immediately as you were looking over the paintings. Is there anything specific that you were trying to figure out? I'm just trying to think about if there's any way I can find maybe like an Ismark or maybe a uh, like something I recognize like just by scanning through the paintings or something like that. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation check. She had one of Ismark. We saw that one, right? Yeah, she had one charcoal. Um, sketch that certainly looked a whole lot like his mark okay. looking at that sketch was it like a younger version of his mark it was probably in his early 20s in that sketch so aurelia as you're looking over everything um a lot of the paint a lot of the different things that you're seeing several of them appear to be places that you've passed specific spots of forest that look very familiar to you um, there's a picture, there's a drawing of the Gates of Kresk. 
Um, it all seems like very much, very much like she was drawing this place. Twenty-one years. Twenty-one years. As I mean, uh, Petra would kind of glance up. You can see there's the color has returned to her face. She is very concerned, but she's no longer terrified of what's happening. She's more gone into a uh, into a concentration mode where she's just trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. So, Strahd von Zarovich is a vampire, ancient, seemingly, and the assumption is that he's the being this plane is anchored to. I mean, the thing is, I have a theory. Is some there's something to do with you know the mist. There's something to do with the wolves. There's something to do with Petra. They all have to be connected somehow. Twenty-one years ago, Ismark's team tried to kill Strahd, and they thought they succeeded. But the plane is still here which would indicate that he still exists in some way. These drawings seem to indicate an approximate difference of 20 years in the people they represent. I mean... Pet, now the question actually, is... now that I think about it, I don't think the wolves are related. I think Petra is related to something with this. I think Ismark is related to something with this. I was going to say, if the wolves are related, why were they trying to kill Petra? Unless that is the end goal of this von Zerich, is to kill her. I mean, if we remember the dream, I guess Veranis will remember this. There were zombies, not wolves. Yes. So. And a vampire. Yeah. Wait, we're honest, now that yeah, I think about it. You think that vampire uh, was somebody important? He was somebody powerful, at the very least. What if that was him? Certainly could be the case. But... Why... We were brought here. We we understand that. We don't know why or by who. The only lead is that these are scattered demiplanes controlled by powerful individuals who we suspect this Strahd to be. I mean, we don't have a confirmation it's him. But why would a vampire want to invite us? Me, especially, to his domain. What do you mean, especially you? A person who specializes in the extermination of vampires and similar creatures. You do bring up a good point. He did send an invitation to all of us. I mean... I an invitation I... that no other... Well, no regular person could have reasonably provided. I mean, I know my people are from this realm, but... What people are those? Vistani? Would they assist us if we found them? I, I, I mean, I don't know any of them. I've never met a single one, I think. I mean, it's unlikely I that you've come across any Barovian Vistani, and if you have, yeah. they wouldn't have exactly advertised that fact. Right. Um, but between you and Ez, you both have the... Esmeralda is also Vistani. Um, you would, you'd have the impression that if you were to come across any here, they should be friendly to you, just because you are fellow Vistani. Right. Oh, just... I mean, uh, I'll ask Petra. These are from dreams, right? Yes, yes, I've been having them as long as I can remember. I mean, what if they're not? Is it, is it possible they're memories? 
I've never that's been to this place before. How could I have memories of a place I've never been to? That's what uh, I'm thinking. But you were mistaken for someone else, weren't you? Someone that the bartender says you look very similar to. Right, I've... Yeah. He says I looked like his dead sister. The question is, where does this Tatiana woman fit in? Or Who Irina? the or hell is it? Tatiana? So Tatiana's the odd name. Uh, he listed off several different names. Tatiana was one of them. Um, he would have said he would have said a bunch of different names. Tatiana, he's he would have said Irina, and then Tatiana, and then he would have listed off a bunch of different names, and um, asked whatever name, whatever we were, whatever name you have this time. Would have been, what he said. Would have been yeah. the way you put it. Let's this set aside. Is... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, let's set aside all of the pictures that depict these these similar women yeah i think this woman is way more important than we think now okay indeed so she nods you can see that ez is actually already pulling a few of them out she's already got three or four of them there she was focusing more on finding the ones that had that man in them and she's found several and the man is mark She's found several of those, but she's also got several that have the red-haired woman who, unsurprisingly, features in a lot of the different images that have his mark in them. You've seen... Do anyone... Sorry. You've seen the image that has her, the red-haired woman, falling off of what looks like a overlook, throwing herself off. There's another where, again, every, every image that you see of this woman is from behind, always the back of her head. And there's one of her in a wedding gown in a opulent cathedral, absolutely resplendent, and a black-haired man standing next to her. There is another of the red-haired woman lying face down in a sparkling pool of water. There is another of her lying in the middle of a road, face down in a pool of blood, wolves lapping at it. They go on like this in various forms. This woman meeting various fates, some of them appearing to be pleasant, others very much not so. And then finally, Ez pulls out one, and it looks new. The paper is crisp. The image hasn't faded at all. It looks like one of the more recent drawings that Petra has done. And it is of, again from behind, a blonde-haired young man standing sword in hand in what looks like catacombs a crypt of some kind. There are five other individuals. One of them appears to be a wizard. Oh my God. There is one of them that appears to be a knight, tall, armored, a great sword at his side. And another very short, possibly a gnome or a halfling wearing light armor. And another that looks like possibly a cleric or a spellcaster of some kind. And they're all standing over the headless woman, the headless body of a red-haired woman, her head angled, facing away from you all, and the blonde-haired man standing several feet back, sword hand drooping down, essentially showing, it looks like a triumph, it looks like a victory, but the blonde-haired man very clearly is not pleased with it. You don't know about the future, Petra, but you've seen the past. I'm There's... gonna stand behind Petra and then see what I see from behind her. Looks a whole lot like the pictures she's been drawing. Oh, 
Okay. Um, I'm gonna go upstairs to talk to Ismark. I'll be uh, right back. And I'm gonna go up to the room where Ismark is. As uh, Aurelia's passing, I'm just gonna mention, uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna tell her, ask him if he has a, a picture of his sister. Will do. Yeah. Well, you mentioned a dark haired man in a few of them. Yes. He doesn't look, well, he doesn't look like his mark. He's not blonde. Correct. Does he have any particular features that stand out? Um, this individual, you are also only viewing from behind whenever you see him. His hair is deep, jet black, slicked back. Whenever you get an image of his hand, there's no color to it at all. Either it is left the color of the canvas or intentionally painted white. Very well dressed, not gaudy or opulent, just just neat. Hmm. Really, when you get to the room, the room that you would assume Ismark had been led to, you do find it locked. I'm gonna knock on the door. No response. You do um, hear a violent snore come through. Um, alright, then if I think he's snoring, then I'm gonna go back downstairs. Um, I'm just gonna say, um, I think he's asleep, unfortunately. As would look up. Well, that's probably for the best. We need him sober. We have questions for this guy. But whatever this may be, Petra, this place obviously has some sort of meaning to you. There's something about this place. It's the key to figuring out whatever all this is, and she points down towards all of the paintings and the drawings. We've known these mean something, Petra. You can't deny it anymore. At this yeah. point, she would look up towards you, Aurelia. She says, I think it's time we figure out what the fates have to say about this. Jesus Christ, why did she mention that? Fuck. <laughs> and um, she pulls out her Taroka deck. Says, let's see what they have to say this time. Wait, are we doing the card reading next session? No shot. We're gonna go ahead and call it a session here. And oh when we come my back, God! we will go ahead and have our Taroka reading. Nice. I like it.